If there was a Guinness World Records Universe book, the records would be astonishing. Hello, I'm Professor Brian Cox, and this is the Royal Opera House in Covent Garden in London. And I hold the Guinness World Records title for the most tickets sold for a science tour. The supermassive black holes out there in the universe. Certainly the most massive compact object. The one we have an image of in the galaxy M87, 55 million light years away, is six billion times the mass of the sun. And that's just one. So that's really easy, actually. Every photon of light entering your eye holds the Guinness World Record for fastest thing in the universe. It's the universal speed limit, the speed of light. But actually, that's the speed of massless objects. If you have no mass, you have to travel at the universal speed limit, the speed of light. So you could, I suppose, say, well, what's the fastest thing that has mass? And that would be things that get ejected from black holes the, or quasars, the supermassive black holes that lie at the, the centres of many active galaxies out there in the universe. We think that the particles that fly out in great beams, which, by the way, I mean, th these things stretch hundreds, thousands of light years out into space. These particles are accelerated uh, somehow by the magnetic fields that surround the galactic centre. So there are great mysteries uh, in these very high energy objects in the universe. The fastest thing that we've made on Earth, the particles in the Large Hadron Collider at CERN in Geneva, which travel around that ring at 99.999999% the speed of light. The largest structure in the universe, you might think it's a galaxy. A galaxy like the Milky Way, uh, typically these things have 400 billion suns maybe, 100,000 light years across. But actually there are structures, clusters of galaxies, great strands of galaxies crossing the universe. And the largest one we've identified is the, the Hercules Corona Borealis Great Wall, which is an astonishing 10 billion light years across. 10 billion light year strand of galaxies. Uh, connected by gravity, stretching across the universe. The largest thing that we know of, that we put a number on, is the observable universe. That's the patch of the universe we can see. It contains something like two trillion galaxies. It's around, just over, 93 billion light years across. It's just the, the boundary of what we can see. Well, there's a smallest length in the universe that we can speak of called the Planck length. In scientific language, it's 10 to the minus 35 metres, which is, um, well, point naught, 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 34 noughts, one of a metre. Unimaginably small, but actually in the study of black holes, here's a remarkable thing. If you ask how much information can a black hole store, then the answer is that it's equal to, in bits, the surface area of the event horizon of a black hole in square Planck lengths. And why that is, nobody knows. The most distant object we know. As I speak, in August 2022, the James Webb Space Telescope has just started sending back data. And actually, almost every week, literally, we discover a more distant object. So by the time you see this, it is likely that what I say will be out of date. But at the moment, as I speak, the most distant confirmed galaxy that we've seen is a galaxy called Glass Z13. The Z Z13 means redshift 13. It means the light has been stretched and stretched and stretched 13 times on its journey across the universe. So the time it's taken the light to travel from it to the telescope is around 13.4, 13.5 billion years. We're looking at the galaxy, or seeing the galaxy as it was, maybe 300 million years after the Big Bang, maybe 200 million. And that's right at the edge of the time when we thought that we would see no galaxies. So we're seeing now the formation of the first galaxies with that instrument. As I speak, there is a candidate called Glass Z20 which is even further away. The James Webb Space Telescope is now 
the largest space telescope ever launched. The James Webb Space Telescope is a worthy successor to Hubble, the most magical instrument in itself. It's a much more powerful telescope, but crucially, it's designed to work in what's called the infrared range, so detect infrared light. And that's extremely important, not least because the light from the distant galaxies has been stretched way into the infrared by the expansion of the universe. And so our reach further out into the universe and therefore further back in time is extended greatly. The James Webb Space Telescope, as I speak, has released its first images. They've been around now for a couple of weeks and they are stunning. They're astonishing high resolution images of galaxies, famous nebulas, but scientifically already the most distant galaxies that we've ever seen are appearing almost routinely in those photographs. Well, equally exciting is the ability of the James Webb Space Telescope to look at the atmospheres of exoplanets, those are planets around distant stars, and characterize those atmospheres, look at the light from those atmospheres to determine what's in the atmosphere. So we've already had a result released that's detected water vapor in the atmosphere of a gas giant planet around a distant star. And I suppose the golden scenario, and who knows, this is a complete guess, but imagine, imagine that the signature of oxygen in a planetary atmosphere, in, in an exoplanetary atmosphere, was detected. That would really be a smoking gun for photosynthesis, maybe life. So the, the James Webb Space Telescope is the most exciting instrument. The oldest light, that's another way of saying what's the most distant thing that we can see. How, how far can we look out? How far back in time can we look? That light is called the cosmic microwave background radiation. And it's light that was emitted when the universe was just under 380,000 years old, when the universe was cooling down and expanding. And there's a moment, and it almost is a moment, when atoms form. And at the moment atoms form, the universe becomes transparent and light can travel through it. And remarkably, we can detect the light that's been traveling across the universe from that moment to our satellites here on Earth, the cosmic microwave background radiation. So that's within a few hundred thousand years uh, of the age of the universe itself. The show is called Horizons, and it's about, well, the universe and our place within it. So I haven't narrowed things down very much at all. It's about cosmology which is the study of the large-scale structure of the universe, the origin of the universe, the evolution of the galaxies, the far future of the universe. But it's also about life in the universe, the most remarkable physical phenomena that we know of, the means by which the universe understands itself. Remarkably, in the study of black holes over the last few decades, and really in the last few years, we've begun to question the very nature of space and time and speak in terms of building blocks of time, atoms of time. I think it's very natural that when you hear that there are two trillion galaxies in the observable universe, to think, well, what does it mean? What is our place in the universe? How valuable or insignificant are we humans? I don't answer them, because if I knew the answers, I'd charge a lot more for tickets. But I hope that the audience go away thinking about those, those big questions as they look at the stars in the sky.